Nayuta is going to blow the freaking lid off of Chainsaw Man Part 2. She's extremely smart, unpredictable, and oh yeah, she's also one of the strongest devils to ever exist, the Control Devil, which of course is one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And seeing as how there's currently two or possibly even three other horsemen out for Denji's heart, in more than one way actually, Nayuta is undoubtedly Denji's most valuable ally and bodyguard, so this is why Nayuta Nayuta's reintroduction into the series is much more important than you think. Nayuta was first introduced in the final chapter of part 1 of Chainsaw Man, chapter 97, where after Denji ate some Wagyu Makima and quote unquote killed her for good, Nayuta was picked up in China by Kashibe and brought to Denji and put in his care. Kashibe's whole reasoning behind this was that if Nayuta was put in the hands of public safety, like Makima was, she would most likely turn out the way Makima did and try to take over the whole world pretty much. And it's also later explained by Pochita in that same chapter that all Makima was looking for was equal relationships with other people where she can see eye to eye with others without having fear involved. Pretty much have some semblance of a family and close loved ones. So it was Denji's goal from then on to raise Nayuta as a normal kid with plenty of love, plenty of attention, and everything that she needs in order to not repeat the same mistakes that Makima did. Well surprisingly in part 2 of the manga we didn't get much of Nayuta or Denji at all and it wasn't until the more recent chapters that we even got any wind of how Nayuta is doing or if she's even still with Denji to begin with. In the Eternity Devil Aquarium arc, Denji explains that he has this sort of friend, sort of little sister living with him. She's very smart and she's even smart enough to go to college even though she's just a preteen, which of course makes a ton of sense because if we knew anything about Makima, she was an extremely intelligent and methodical individual so it only makes sense that her reincarnation in Nayuta would also present these same qualities. And speaking of reincarnations, this is also a very interesting aspect of Nayuta's existence in general that doesn't really get talked too much about in the manga or even in the Chainsaw Man community because the life cycle of a devil is much different to an average human. When an average human dies they're just straight up dead but when it comes to devils if a devil dies on earth it's born again in hell and then once it's killed in hell it reincarnates on earth as a completely different entity. So that means that after Denji ate Makima she reincarnated in hell in possibly the same form and was then immediately killed by devils in hell which then allowed Nayuta to come back to earth where Kashibe found her in China. And if I were to take a guess I would put my money on the darkness devil being the one to take the control devil down in hell seeing as it's probably the only strong enough devil to be able to do so and I'm sure it held a grudge against Makima in their last encounter during the international assassins arc. And although Nayuta was reincarnated as a completely separate being we have seen in the most recent chapters of Chainsaw Man that she has retained many of the abilities that Makima had during her lifetime. Time. Before Denji and Asa have their date at his house, he explains that there's three rules that she cannot break under any circumstance for fear of being killed by her roommate, which of course we knew to be Nayuta. And these three rules are one, not being able to open the door of any other apartment other than his, two, not being able to open the fridge, and three, under no circumstance, be allowed to kiss Denji in front of her. Now, these rules in themselves kind of raise some questions here. Like how Asa said, why would anybody want to open the apartment? apartment door of anybody else's other than Denji's and the only way I can explain this at this point is that there is a possibility that Nayuta has laid claim to the entire apartment complex and all the people living in each one of those apartments because as we all know one of Nayuta's abilities as the control devil is being able to control anyone or anything that she deems to be inferior to her and this control is represented through chains attaching to that specific individual as we saw with Makima and most recently Nayuta when she shot that chain through Asa his head and pretty much made her turn into a dog. It's very possible that everybody else living in that apartment complex has fallen victim to the same control where they're pretty much just Nayuta's playthings or toys in a way. So being the kid that she is, anyone opening a door to any other apartment complex besides Denji's, Nayuta would consider this as trying to take her toys away from her or trying to intrude on things that are hers. And when it comes to the second rule, this is also kind of a very interesting and odd rule because the only real tangible explanation that we can have to this in the story is the fact that Denji literally got rid of her prior form by storing and eating her from that same fridge. I mean, it's also stated that a devil's memories are completely wiped after they reincarnate, so it's very unlikely that this is the case, but it kind of makes you think, doesn't it? Now, when it comes to the third rule, this is when we have some real implications here that we can discuss because it would make sense that this rule exists because of something that happened prior, right? There's no way that Nayuta could have just made up this rule from nothing, like just a rule that 
that she kind of thought of to make her top three rules kind of rounded out or something. It is very possible that there was a situation in which Denji kissed another girl in front of Nayuta and Nayuta reduced her to a similar fate that she did to Asa. Or honestly worse, she might have just completely gotten rid of her. And really what we can gather from all three of these rules in general is that Nayuta still shows that controlling personality that is very apparent in the control devil. She claims things to be hers and doesn't want anybody else touching them. But that being said, it is worth pointing out that Nayuta's form of control or using her abilities is much less sinister than Makima's were, seeing as how Makima was taking control of other people, other individuals, with the end goal of pretty much controlling the entire world. Whereas Nayuta kind of seems to be this child who takes control of people or other things to get some enjoyment, as we saw in chapter 120, where she turns Asu into a dog instead of killing her, and just goes on to laugh and laugh about it and thinks it's the most hilarious thing ever. Sure, there's a little bit of scariness to that, but in the grand scheme of Chainsaw Man, it's a very lighthearted interaction if you ask me. Now, aside from using the chains to control other individuals, it is very possible and very likely that Nayuta also adopted the other abilities that Makima had, like being able to control small rodents, small animals, and use them as surveillance pretty much to where she can listen in on almost anything from anywhere around the world. It's also been theorized that in every instance that we've seen any form of crows or certain birds throughout the manga, this is actually Nayuta listening in on what's going on. Because for those of you that have watched the anime, it was heavily implied during the episode where Makima just goes on to squish a bunch of people that she was using crows all around to get a good idea of where her targets were. And the same case has applied in Chainsaw Man Part 2 where it's possible that in the instance where Yuko was jumping from building to building, she gets interrupted by a large crowd of birds and then goes on to be immediately killed afterwards. Now exactly who it is that killed Yuko and why is a completely different conversation, but at the very least it's possible that these planted crows throughout the manga is Fujimoto's subtle way of telling us that Nayuta has been listening this entire time and is very aware of everything that's going on. It's made pretty clear in chapter 120 that she hasn't been able to identify other horsemen, but at the very least can tell that whoever a horseman is has a different scent than other people or other things as she tells Denji that she doesn't like Asa's scent, which is most likely because Yoru is living within her body. It's also worth noting that Nayuta is also able to alter the memories of others just like Makima was because we see that she's able to wipe Asa's memories and even alter them to make her believe that she was stood up by Denji. And this also extends out to Yoru because so far it seems like Yoru is completely oblivious to everything that happened before she got her memory wiped. The way part two of Chainsaw Man has been shaping out is looking more and more likely that Denji is going to have to face off and somehow defeat two other horsemen of the apocalypse. And as we saw in part one, it was extremely difficult and literally almost impossible to defeat just one. And in theory, the war devil and the famine devil are potentially more powerful than even the control devil. So Nayuta's insight, abilities, and sharp intellect are going to be probably one of the most important tools for Denji to survive throughout all of this. It's very likely that Nayuta is going to deduce the things that are going on behind the scenes before Denji ever does and take it upon herself to try to solve certain issues, seeing as how she views Denji as her property and she will go to any length to protect her own property. We've already seen that Nayuta can pretty easily overcome Asa and Yoru, seeing as how Yoru is in a weakened state, but Nayuta versus Fami, the Famine Devil, is a completely different conversation. Whereas the Famine Devil, in theory, would have a stronger arsenal of abilities, maybe a stronger arsenal of allies, what Nayuta might have on her side is her intelligence and Denji himself, seeing as how him being the wild card of the entire series can many times work to his benefit. The way Chainsaw Man Part 2 has been playing out is very much in classic Fujimoto fashion, where all these moving parts are all working behind the scenes, building and building up behind a layer of monotony and normalcy, which makes it to where at any moment, things can hit the fan and go from 0 to 100 in an instant, where we're probably going to see an all-out battle between Fami, the Famine Devil, Yoru, the War Devil, and Denji and Nayuta. And it's very possible that Denji's very life and existence will be in the hands of this preteen girl who enjoys counting her own farts.